So I think we'd all agree that the past 12 months or so have brought about a fair amount of change. No, not all of it has been completely challenging. In fact, some of it hasn't made huge headlines, like a totally new Rolls Royce Ghost, or a completely new Mercedes Maybach, or something we do need to pay attention to is just as important, but would be considered slightly more nuanced, and that would be a totally new engine in the Bentley Flying Spur. So a 4-liter twin-turbocharged V8, 542 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. That in turn drives all four wheels through an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. We will talk a little bit more about that later because you kind of know where that transmission comes from. And then there are the performance figures. 0 to 60, 4 seconds, not that much farther off of the 3.7 of the 12-cylinder and VMAX. The 12-cylinder is a basic comparison, 207. This one, 198. You really didn't expect this to be a lightweight, did you? 5,152 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 2,337 kilograms with that. Oh yeah, I've said before in many episodes, the secret about Bentley V8s, they're no slouch. This is a fast car. This is really something that one would not look at and say, oh my God, I wish I got the V12. That said, the sweet spot is definitely somewhere between three and 4,000 RPM. And I would argue a huge reason for that is the Porsche-derived transmission. Here it has all the goodness we have learned in Porsches, but the character with this car, the match is magnificent. And that brings us to one of the most underappreciated benefits of a V8 and a Flying Spur, which would be less weight in the nose. And it's not by a little, it is by a lot. 220 less pounds over the front axle. That in turn works in conjunction with something that came from the V12 Flying Spur, and that's some additional bracing. You can see in the rear, underneath the rear subframe, and then up front, connecting the shock towers as well as the front structure of the car. And that in turn works with the platform of the vehicle. And here, this is a point that Bentley, they don't want to advertise and they don't understand why, because this is a good thing. This shares the same platform with all of those Panameras we have driven on racetracks, very fast, and they do very well. So the combination of the Panamera platform with the additional bracing, that means we're able to do the aggressive driving we're doing today. Then they layer on a couple of optional chassis control systems, and this is the biggest reason why we're able to do some of the stuff we are today. Number one, there is four-wheel steering, and number two, there is the active anti-roll bars. Now, what exactly are the active anti-roll bars doing? Well, think of an anti-roll bar as one bar connected, and that's something you've seen on like that 230 Mercedes I got sitting behind that camera. Here, it's not the bar connected from one side of the car to the other. Think of it as two halves that's connected to an electric motor. That, in turn, is connected to a 48-volt electrical system. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, it's not the entire car that's 48 volt, it is just the suspension system, like we've experienced in the Porsches and the Audis. This is a similar system. Bentley does like to make a stink out of the fact that they're the ones that introduced it to the Volkswagen Group. But back to what it does. The two halves are connected to the electric motor in the center, and as it goes down straight and level road, the two halves are disconnected, so it does not disturb the ride quality of the vehicle. And this being a Bentley, that's kind of a big deal. And for the avoidance of doubt, yes, we're driving it aggressively today, but in comfort mode, kind of going down PCH, this drives like pretty much any other Bentley. However, as we drive it aggressively, the two bits know they're not connected and doing the same thing. They're working opposite of each other. So as one side goes up, the other side goes down, and it counterbalances the weight leaning so the car can actually get through the turn without transferring weight too quickly so it doesn't plow, doesn't squat, doesn't dive, or doesn't pitch. So it's got most of the control over the disparate planes of motion like a Porsche Panamera, but here there's a limit, especially when it comes to pitch. Like for example, getting into this turn here, as I push aggressively, that one half is pushing in the opposite direction than the other, and that's why it doesn't lean off to one side and I can get through the turn. And that's aided with the four-wheel steering system, and really what that's doing is increasing the overall high-speed stability. 
Backing down to some of the more basic bits like the steering, it's direct, good feedback. It's not quite the weight that I'd want, but I'm gonna give it a pass here. I'm not gonna do my usual complaint of, oh, I'd like heavier steering or better feel to the steering. It's a Bentley. It's trying to do something different, something that not a Porsche or a Corvette are trying to do. At almost 5,200 pounds, the brakes have a lot of work to do here. And I can't honestly say there isn't enough braking power. Like, there's good feedback to the pedal. There's okay pedal modulation. But again, this is trying to be a Bentley, not trying to be a Porsche. And when you consider it's trying to be a GT car in that process, God, this thing is really good. The brakes are well matched to the person personality of the vehicle. One aspect about the driving dynamics of this thing that I find so surprising, it doesn't want to plow. A vehicle usually this length and of this weight, when you push it too aggressively, you can easily get out over your skis and you push it too hard in a turn like this, you will go that way. Uh, but here, the tendency to plow is very limited. That's something I really just didn't expect. I would argue design is incredibly more important to these types of vehicles because let's be honest, they inherently attract more attention and as such they have to have the presence to cash those checks. Something incredibly hard to convey through a camera but much easier to understand with cars that are already on the road. Like for example, the 2021 Rolls-Royce Ghost is four inches longer in wheelbase than this. However, a car not on the road, the new Mercedes Maybach, that's eight inches longer in wheelbase than this. But where I feel crew builds on that a bit more successfully than the others is using more classic proportions, a short deck and a long nose. But in addition to the short deck, it's a bit higher. You look at the back of the Rolls-Royce and the Maybach, it's too low in the back. It makes it look more like an old man's car. Then they bring those proportions together through character lines, some starting in the front, some starting in the back, and almost running the entire length of the vehicle. But in the rear door, they have a very unique way of how those two character lines almost meet. Now there is one additional thing we do need to geek out about, and that would be the Mulliner driving specification. And think of that as a hunting license to customize your Bentley within Bentley. Now, there are a ton of things to cover here. Uh, it's like asking how long is a piece of string, but some things that stand out to me, the leather headliner, sport pedals, the bejeweled fuel filler cap, as well as the oil filler cap, and then the wheels. So it turns out with the Mulliner driving specification, you get 22 inch wheels. But apparently not everybody wants like wagon wheel size wheels on their Bentley. So you could say no to the 22 inch wheels and get the smaller wheels, say you lived in a cold climate or just want a little bit better ride quality. Now, although this is not entirely an exhaustive list, we can't forget the embroidered Bentley wings on the seats. And then another fascinating bit of information I learned from Richard, he's the product manager of this car in the US, uh, that four place seating package. Turns out there is a very high take rate for it in every other country except for the US. Something I don't understand, but then again, it's probably above my pay grade. So we press on to the steering wheel, and there, there are four different designs on offer. No, it's not just four different types of leather or single tone or two tone like this one has. It's a different design, like this one has the more sporty design that comes part of the Mulliner drive spec. And while we're on the Mulliner drive spec, like a big piece of it is the ability to mix and match different leathers inside the car, like you see the two-tone here, and granted, I'd want different colors, but the concept of being able to do that, that's one of the bigger parts of what they call the MDS, if you're in the know, within the Bentley folks. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the Options Game with today's contestant, a very well specced out Bentley. This one, the 2021 Bentley Flying Spur V8 for a base price of $196,000. To that, we have the color. Now, you would look at that and say, oh, it's silver. It's got to be one of the basic colors. Turns out you would be wrong. Now, I wouldn't spec a Bentley in silver. However, this one is a very special silver. They call it Silver Frost. And to get it, you need not one, but two option packages. The first would be that Mulliner driving specification we talked about earlier with all that stuff. 
Uh, this one was spec with all that stuff and the smaller wheels. This one's got the 21s. Either way, all that stuff and the wheels and the paint, or half the paint, $18,130. Then to get the Silver Frost, one is required to get the pearlescent three coat paint for $13,625. Why so much for paint? Well, have you heard the old story how one could walk into Bentley and say, I've got this coin that I want my car to match the color of. Well, apparently that's what happened here. This was one of these colors where someone walked into crew and said, I want that color on my car. And it was one of those one-off bespoke colors. Now it's part of this Mulliner and pearlescent range and costs a lot of money. Uh, then we add the Porpoise and Damson interior. So it's a two-tone interior. Remember, that's part of the Mulliner driving specification with dark stained burl walnut. Then on top of that, the contrast stitch and seat piping is an additional $3,610. Then the LED welcome lamps by Mulliner translated from Bentley speak to common English, illuminated door sills, $1,105. The touring spec, incredibly important in this vehicle. That is the night vision, the head-up display, the adaptive cruise control, and a lot of safety doodads for $8,555. Heated windshield, $810. The panoramic sunroof with the twin blinds and vanity mirrors, $3,370. Then we press on to the deep pile over mats, front and rear, once again, translated from Bentley speak to common English, floor mats, optional in an almost $200,000 car for $610. Then something very important in a Bentley, veneer picnic tables. They would be very helpful for assisting in a little light reading. $5,470. Uh, then the stereo system, named for Bentley, $8,880. Then the Bentley rotating display. I thought this was standard on Continentals and Flying Spurs. Turns out it is such a high take rate for this option at $6,000. $425, most of them, actually all of them I have seen have had it. And I gotta say, I love driving this car with the three analog gauges on a dashboard. Then we press on to what is most likely the least expensive option on this vehicle, the air ionizer for $345, which brings us to arguably the option that is enabling us to do what we are doing today, the Bentley Dynamic Ride System, that is the four-wheel steering and the active anti-roll bars for $7,730. Then the Flying Spur Black Line specification, we will talk more about that later, $4,875. Then the Illuminated Flying B for the Radiator mascot, this I'm a sucker for this, even at $4,910. Then a Qi wireless charger is optional in an almost $200,000 car. The one thing going for it, you can have it in the front, you can have it in the back, or you can have it in both places. Uh, then the mood lighting specification. I have no idea what this is, but it is $2,570, which leaves us only one thing to add, and that is the destination handling from Crew England for $2,725. I am told there is a gas guzzler tax for this vehicle because it is 15, 20, 17 combined. However, that was not contained in this build sheet because the vehicle we are driving is a European spec vehicle. It was flown over here for a short period of time. It's kind of like a pilot build. So it will be going back to Europe, which brings us to the total retail price for one of the most uniquely equipped Bentleys we've ever driven together, $271,910. So another fascinating tidbit I picked up on my call with Richard. You guys may remember friend of the show and inside the Motorman studio guest, Bo Buckman. He runs Galpin Autosports here in Los Angeles, as well as Galpin Ford, which I believe is the largest Ford deal in the world, something like that. Anyway, he also makes a lot of money taking the chrome trim off of my box, Rolls Royces and Bentleys, and making them black trim, whether it's glossy or satin finish. So the folks in crew are scratching their head and like, wait a minute, 
why is this guy running a Ford dealership making money off of our cars? So they went back to the drawing board, at least in design, and said, we're going to start making the black trim from the factory and make it part of the MDS spec, or at least an offshoot of the MDS spec. And that's why this car has black trim and Bo Buckman didn't do it. So in order to bring all of this together, we need to circle back to the point that Bentley does not like to advertise about this vehicle, and that is the fact that it shares a platform with the Porsche Panamera. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, it is not trying to be a Porsche. It does not drive like a Porsche. It drives very much like a Bentley. But the fact that it has Porsche DNA running through its veins, especially its transmission, makes this go way beyond that old saying, well, the Bentley, that's the driver's car, which brings us to the wish list. And I had to spend a lot of time thinking on this because there really isn't much I would change here. The only thing, and this is a huge ask, a 48 volt electrical system throughout the entire car, not just the suspension system. And here's why. Performance, not efficiency, because you're not looking at this for fuel economy, but think about what we did today and having the ability to do that with the torque coming from zero, which could be tuned in a 48 volt mild hybrid system with that engine. And that brings us to the point where I turn this around to you guys and you will find in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All One Word, Moto Man TV All One Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram about that or anything else we should add to the wish list, kind of like not getting one in silver. And with that, I do want to leave you with something my design nerd found in this car that I love. You know how Bentleys and Rolls Royces, they have a wood dash and it's book matched, meaning it's mirrored. Well, this one has a carbon fiber rear spoiler and the carbon fiber is book matched. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.